So there was a time in my playing where I felt like I couldn't solo as well as I wanted to or as well as I was thinking in my head at least. So I wanna share with you some tips and some things I went through to actually excel that soloing experience. <laughs> So my first issue was taking bass fills and trying to make them into solo phrases. So when I would play bass fills, I would just So I would try to take a feel like that and try to finesse it or enhance it and just make it a little bit longer so I knew exactly what to do. I always re resorted back to the bass line and never really went out you know, and stretched out just a little bit further. So what I did was take that same, was, it's really more like a bebop line or a fill or jazz line. Uh, so what I took, I took that line, I added just a little bit more onto it. So I started adding a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. But the problem was, is where are these notes coming from? So that was my second problem. How do I add on? Where is this coming from? Where are these notes? Where am I going? All right, where's my destination? So I had to figure out what fit, right? And where to put it <laughs> and what notes to choose from. So I had to figure out what key I'm in and you know what mode I'm using, all of that good stuff. So all of this is going through my mind. Okay, so take a bass fill. So this was my original, you know, this was my original formula for creating these type of lines or just soloing in that way or to just, you know, lengthen my solos so take a bass fill make it longer that was my first thing that that was it second thing is i have to figure out where it's coming from so so i'm working with the mixolydian mode right now so i have to know that in order to take my soloing to the next level so mixolydian mode a flat And I can use other notes inside of that, so passing notes, things like that. It was really popular for me when I was growing up playing in church, so I can play a lot of chromatic lines, uh, and it really worked very well, especially with the blues scale. So blues scale, I'm not necessarily in a blues mode right now, but even with the Mixolydian scale. So even with the Mixolydian scale, I can use that chromaticism to my advantage. So I started adding little passing notes inside of that to make it a little bit more interesting and just to lengthen that bass fill. So once I got that, so even there, that sharp four or the flat five, I use it, I use it as a passing tone. I'm not landing right on that D. I'm actually using that to get to the E flat. So D, uh, F, E flat. Uh, da, da. Okay, so I'm not landing on it. I'm using it to my advantage. So these different notes I started playing and experimenting with, and that's the third thing, just experiment, just to see what sounds right. You have your modes, you have your, you know, solidified things that you can go to or solidified methods or uh, modes or different notes and different scales to the exact point that, you know, that they're made up of, but you don't have to stay confined to that. So once I started realizing, okay, let's go outside of my comfort zone, out of the box, out of that Mixolydian seven note scale, and I can actually add some chromaticism in there, some passing notes and, you know, passing tones like that. I just started doing all kinds of stuff. Fourth thing, I just tried to memorize these phrases that I did. So whenever it came up, it was just simple for me to do and it just kind of came as a routine to me when I would play these certain things or certain lines when I started off. So now I have the muscle memory to know, okay, I can go here, I can go here, I can go here after that. So that formation or that 
group of notes, now muscle memory just makes me remember, okay, now I have all of these notes. I have 10, 11, 12 different notes in sequence that I can play that I know will work, especially in the time frame, or if it's a specific rhythm that I have to fit this, fit these notes in or this solo in, uh, now I know that. So that's just four things that went through my head in the beginning. That's not even diving into exactly what I'm playing. I just kind of touched on that. But if you guys want to know more or learn more or any licks like this, we have tons on the channel, but dive a little bit deeper. Bass Nation Academy is where you want to be. We dive deep. We dissect all of these notes, all of these phrases, all of these licks, lines, riffs, uh, and not just show you how to do it, but to create your own, uh, to be able to be experimental with your own. Is that a word? Yeah, experimental with your own <laughs> chords, uh, your own phrases, your own lines, uh, just adding your voice. And that's very important to me uh, that I try to portray to all the Bass Nation members. Uh, just creating your own voice is, is so important to me. So you don't sound exactly like the next guy. We don't need another next guy, right? We don't need another uh, Victor. We, won't, we don't need another Jocko. We don't need another uh, Marcus. We don't need another O'Teal. Um, so guys, like we don't need another Flea. So make your sound your sound. You know, you can grab from all of these guys uh, and all your influences. Um, even if it may be me, you know, you can grab from all of these people. This is what I've, I've done to create my own voice. So that's very important to know and to learn. Anyway, I'll stop rambling. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit that red subscribe button, uh, hit the notification bell icon uh, below so you can get notified every single time we upload a video on this channel. Um, what else? Yeah, write your comments down below and I love chopping it up with you guys in the comments. Anyway, uh, make sure you're also coming out clean, clear and precise. Check you guys in the next one. Peace.